Well, that's a mission for us. Is uh, Every week we get together on Tuesdays, every week that we can. And uh, we've been doing it for seven years this year. And um, it's our ministry. Bobby, stylistically, what type of music does the band normally play? Uh, everything we do pretty much is contemporary Christian music, and then we do some of the oldie, goodie, oldie but goodies, and uh, we put our little twist to it, a little Route 316 twist to it. You guys are just two of your six, seven member band. Mm -hmm. um, Randy, I want you to tell me what each of the band members brings to your group, not just what instrument they play, but what, what about their personality, their character, what do they give to this group? Boy, now this is a self-incriminating question here. Uh, Joel Carter's the lead singer, and Joel brings a lot of natural ability, uh, great energy, always a lot of fun. Uh, never know what he's going to do, uh, which is good. Uh, Gene Carlton plays keyboards, rhythm guitar, backup vocals, just very versatile, kind of a steadying hand of sorts. Uh, Jim Spangler's our bass player, and Jim just brings a, a, a very caring spirit. I, I think uh, of all the band, he has uh, probably the most um, caring heart of, of all of us. Um, Bobby Dollar, of course, Bobby is the, the brains behind the, the, the band. Uh, he uh, is the one that's uh, kind of, I guess, a business manager of sorts and uh, very proud, very energetic and, uh, and thoughtful in his efforts on the band's behalf. Uh, Chris Hall uh, is, um, as I've described before, the maestro. Uh, he is the musical coordinator. He plays every instrument that everybody plays in the band, plays it as well as or better than anybody else in the band. And his talent is just uncanny. And his organization of the music is so important. Um, and uh, of course, I bring um, a mouth, so that, that, that helps. And of course, Kathy Gartley brings a, a violin. She plays with us, of course, and that just is such a nice touch that very few bands have is that, that nice violin feel. And then Tony Chapman plays with us as well at times, just depending on their schedules. And Tony, my goodness, plays a saxophone, flute, you name it. Again, very multi-talented, but all of them with a, a great giving, caring Christian spirit. And I think that's the, the tie that binds all of us together. All right. So, uh, Bobby, would you say the same thing? Of course, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Let's talk about Randy. What, do you, what would you say, in your opinion, he brings to the band? Uh, he's an amazing musician, but uh, more than that is his spirit and his Christianity. Um, he is uh, one of a kind. He's, uh, we use him out front as our front man to do all the speaking because he's good at it. But um, the main thing is just his Christian, his Christian beliefs. Um, you know, he, he does a lot of things around town. He um, MCs a lot of things. He writes a lot of articles, but they don't really know Randy. And um, if you come see Route 316, you'll see his talent and you get to know him a lot better. As we talked, there was the one question that the group is always having to answer. How did they choose the name Route 316? Bobby and Randy both had different perspectives on the answer. Well, it came, Jim Spangler, our bass player, came up with the name. Um, and then he came up, it came from Jeremiah, where we were talking about spreading the roots. Uh, so we're spreading the roots of God and through the community and around South Georgia and all over the world if we can. And uh, the other comes from John 316. Let me expound on what sure. Bobby just said, because when I first heard the name, uh, I got in the band after the band was formed. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the latest, I'm the newest kid on the block as far as the band's concerned. But I thought that it more reflected that these men were rooted in the spirit of John 316. And uh, that that was a, a foundation for the rest of the band to build on and to grow on. And uh, like Bobby said, to spread through the whole community and ho hopefully beyond the community. You guys are always giving back to your community. You're really putting yourselves out there. Um, the charitable concerts, how did that all get started? Well, we felt like we were not really doing what we wanted to do as far as giving back to the community. We found a, um, a niche where we needed to give back to the community in a way of fundraisers. Um, we knew that we had the talent, we had the uh, capability of putting on a show, as far as a show, not a show for us, but uh, a show that a lot of people would attend, and uh, it's all God-based, all Christian-based, but we, um, we felt like there was a lot of need in the community. Well, the main reason, I think, was to give um, the community a rallying point around some of these uh, causes that they hear about a lot of times, and, and you'll know what I'm saying, you'll, you'll hear about something that's going on and you think, gosh, you know, I wish I could do something. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times there's not a clear direction of what to do. And uh, 
we felt like if we were to put an event together uh, that uh, the community could, uh, could rally around, that it would kind of take care of itself. And uh, there really wasn't, uh, there hasn't been a tangible, we didn't want to say this is how much we've got to make. We just wanted to kind of, again, leave it up to God. Whatever it was going to be, it was going to be. And uh, you plant the mustard seed sometimes, and if it's supposed to be kudzu, it turns into kudzu, and it goes all over the place. And that's kind of what's happened with this. I think it's more of a, a rallying point for the community than it is just a concert, if that makes sense.